I've had mental health problems my entire life, but I didn't know that was the case until I was 52. And I was driving home from an early morning yoga class on a very dark and dank February morning, 11 years ago, almost to the day, when suddenly an ambulance turned on its sirens and its blue lights and shot past me. Nino, 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 Nino. And as if someone had pressed a switch, I put my foot on the accelerator and accelerated to 85, then 90 miles an hour. And I was looking for a tree at the side of the road with which to connect. I want to make it clear I was not trying to take my life. I have never been suicidal. I loved my life and I love my life now. But at that moment, the monkey on my shoulder said into my ear, if you are so severely injured that you are in intensive care, then maybe they will know the damage they've done. Who they is, I can only surmise. Was it the man who I worked with who for eight years subjected, subjected me to horrific emotional abuse and bullying? Yeah. Or was it the people who knew that was going on in senior leadership and who chose to turn a blind eye? Absolutely. Or was it perhaps the sexual predators who preyed on me at various intervals from the age of five? Or was it actually my teachers who at secondary school gave me A star star for all my incredibly emotive, detailed, descriptive essays that I wrote about loneliness, abandonment and grief after the death of my mother when I was seven, but never thought to look behind the words. Not one of them ever came and said, are you okay, Tana? In those days, there was no such thing as therapy or counselling. In fact, we were told we knew our mum was going to die, and therefore, when she did die, we were not to speak of her again. So I buried the grief that I felt, and it was only years ago that I discovered that what I believed to be true as a child was not true at all because we were told that she was going to die. My mum was six months, sorry, 16 weeks pregnant with me when she was told that she had developed an autoimmune disease and that she was going to become completely paralyzed within a year to two years and that it was terminal and she was going to die. She had a one-year-old and a three-year-old. She had a 16-week-old inside. Can you imagine what that did to her? It sent her into fight or flight and that adrenaline that she had in her body throughout those remaining months of me being inside, I absorbed into my nervous system. And I now recognize and understand that that is one of the reasons why I have lived revving up here my whole life and why I've struggled my whole life with really severe anxiety. And I've told myself off and berated myself off being so weak and pathetic for being that way, when actually there's a very, very valid reason why my nervous system is always in overdrive. And I can forgive myself for that. So when my mother was, um, had me, she was getting paralysed very quickly. And by the time I could walk, she was paralysed from the neck down. Unfortunately, the illness also robbed her of her voice. And I became her voice, as did my brother and sister. We became storytellers from the moment I could speak, bringing the outside world into her bed, into her sitting room. What I didn't realise was that I believed that as I was growing up, if I was the goodest girl I could ever be for her, the goodest girl, she would get better. What I now know to be true is what I actually believed was, in my soul, if I was the goodest girl ever, when she died, she'd take me with her. But of course she couldn't. She left me behind. So as a seven-year-old who had tried with everything she had in her heart to do the right thing, I was left behind. And at the age of 63 now, you can see it still impacts me. And I was never allowed to share that sense of abandonment with anybody. So I buried it. So 11 years ago, the ambulance comes. I'm looking for a tree. The last thing I have is a tree coming really fast in the center of my windscreen, and then everything goes black. And I go through a, a, a feeling as though I've had this connection with the tree in slow motion. But when I come to, I'm actually 200 metres down the road, having spun the car clearly several times, totally physically unharmed, but emotionally completely destroyed. 
I was taken into a London psychiatric hospital where I spent not the promised three days of assessment, but a full traumatic six months. I missed my daughter's 18th birthday. She's here hearing me speak for the first time. <laughs> I missed her 18th birthday. I missed her last term at school. I missed her A-levels. And I would not have wished to have experienced any of those things that led to that point in my life. But I can honestly tell you, hand on heart, I would not have missed the experience for the world. Because it has led to such an extraordinary understanding and determination to understand why so many people, normal people, just like you and me and your children and your husbands and your family members, your colleagues, are struggling so badly with mental health problems.